Hey everybody and welcome again to another video brought to you by Basic Fishing. Today we're here in Top Catch Fungal Parat, which by the way I'd like to say a huge thank you for letting me to film here. And in today's video, I am going to be doing our shopping guide for the complete beginners out there. And the purpose of this video is to talk about what budget gears you can buy and how budgetly you can go. And yeah, basically the goal of this video is to show what type of budget gears you can get, what kind of fish and fishing styles you can do, and how much it all costs. As most people would know, I myself was a beginner and I also had to go through a lot of budget shopping myself. So I hope you all learn a thing or two in this video. And yeah, stay tuned for some fishy action. Okay, so before we start, the fishing style that we are gonna be focusing are the more generic style of fishing. So whatever gear you take with you, you can use it in multiple situations, whether it's off the wharf, the boat, and the rocks. To start off, we are gonna be going with the tackles. Because a lot of people, they jump ahead and um, they also go with the rod. But when they go through the tackles, they're not sure on what stuff to get. So over here, we have a range of pre-made tackles, ranging from the budget to the quality right here. The first thing that you want to look for is the style of rigs that are available. Like these two here, for example. This is a ledger rig. So that's a flasher rig right there. This is probably one of the best all-rounder gears that you can use in any situations, including land-based fishing. And this one here, this is a stray line rig. I just got into stray lining very recently. And this type of fishing, it's more of an advanced approach in my opinion, mainly because you're presenting a bait more naturally, whereas the ledger rig, you have two big baits and you're just dropping it down to the bottom and you're just presenting it in like a big branch, whereas this, you're letting the bait flow down in the water as naturally as possible. And for the beginners, I would recommend getting the ledger rig. And the size I would recommend is between three to four bar of hooks. And also the hook style is also different. As you can see here, this is a circle hook. And the difference between this here, this is the J style hook, is that the circle hooks, you don't need a strike. And 90% of the time you get the fish hooked at the corner of the mouth. And for a beginner, this is really important because I have seen too many um, people where they used a J-style hook, a one bar hook size to be exact, and they, um, my God, I've seen them catch 10 undersized snappers, and by the time they try to dig the hook out, all of those snappers were floating dead on the surface, and by the 10th snapper, he finally landed a legal one. I mean, I'm pretty sure most people know I use one bar J-style hook myself, but that's only because I know what species I'm after and I also know when to time my strike. Of course, I often make mistakes every now and then, but honestly speaking, I don't make as much mistakes as those guys out there. And another good thing I like to um, point out is that quite often, these brands, they often have a good promotion like here, that is four for $20. So if you're on a budget, that's probably a good place to start. And, um, but if you're really worried about the quality of those budget gears. And of course, you got the Black Magic range here as well. And yeah, I might, it does sound hypocritical that I am sponsored by Black Magic, but I can swear to you, the first time I started fishing, I always used these um, Black Magic flushes. Black Magic ranges have been increasing over the past several years. And once again, I recommend getting the, um, the Ledger Rig style, the Stray Lining style, I would um, steer away unless you get more experience or you get exposed to the um, stray lining style a bit more. And um, the hook size again, three borrow to four borrow recurve style. So these two I found to be the best for um, off the wharf, the boat and the rocks as well. And um, this three borrow here, especially for the beginners, because it's a recurve hook style, you always get the fish at the corner of the mouth, but you also catch kawaii and gurnet as well. What are the best fish to catch on land base? Now, another uh, pre-made rig I would recommend is the uh, sabiki rigs. So these sabiki rigs are probably one of the best um, rigs to use, especially uh, for complete beginners who just wants to um, learn how to catch a single fish, whether it's small or big or whatever. Although these are mostly for uh, small fish. But the, sim the beauty about these rigs is that if you're on a wolf that has really deep water, all you got to do is just rig it up, 
drop it down to the bottom and just jig it up and down and the mackerel they'll fall for it very easily this is probably my most favorite one mainly because i grew up using this and many years later this came along and funny enough when this came out in 2005 and i used it for the first time on the uh, size 4 i caught 10 pipers in one session which was pretty epic you know whatever you, whatever you um pick make sure to get one of these as well but before we even um think about calling that a finish there are some additional gears that you need as well and that is the sinkers okay so for those who don't know what a sinker is this is it it's basically a piece of lead mounted into a shape etc and you need this to um, make sure that your rig sinks to the bottom because you know the fish they're not going to be close to the surface they will be um, close to the bottom so in order to um, make the most of your fishing you want a few sinkers and the recommended weight I would recommend for beginners is a three ounce to a five ounce well three ounce would be probably the best um, to start off with and there are different styles of sinkers as well and I'll just run them down for you really quickly the ball sinker is probably one of the most standard sinkers um, that you can use I also have the teardrop sinker here as well the cool thing about this is that it has a clip at the bottom as you can see here so the good thing about this is that you can clip on the uh, the sinker onto your rig without having to tie it tying on and um, another sinker is this one here this is probably a bit more advanced but for the beginners out there wants to learn um, just keep this in mind this is a breakaway sinker I used to use this a lot on my surf casting and the cool thing about this is that it's designed to be anchored down on the bottom and when the fish hits or if you want to pull it out those wires will break out so it's designed to keep your bait in one position and this is ideal especially when you're fishing in a surging wave or if you're fishing in a place where there's lots of current all right so now we got those two free um, components next is selecting the right rod and obviously there's a whole bunch of range of gears out there and it can be a bit overwhelming but there are always um, good budget gears available the first one I would pick is this Hyperloop gear from Shimano this is this reel as many people would recognize is one of the first rods I used when I showcased my first video on YouTube and I think this is one of the best beginners gears to use so this rod is 6 feet rated between 8 to 12 kilos and the reel here it's a 6,000 size reel board with 20 pound gear I mean this is a no brainer if you, if you think about it because um, this will catch you all species can handle all types of abuse and also works in all styles of fishing you could probably use this off the wharf on the boat as well and maybe um, if you want to learn stray lighting off the rocks this gear is probably another way to learn from but if you want to go cheaper the job is Walker brand so as you can see this reel is slightly smaller I mean this gear is mostly would be good better off the wharf but could also be good for light gear fishing on the boat as well and also on the kayak as well if you want to learn um, kayak fishing I mean it's not the most powerful sophisticated type of gear but honestly speaking and I'm pretty sure that most tackle owners would agree on this topic I think most people would be skeptical on selling expensive gears to the customers mainly because if the customers don't know how to look after them those gears won't last whereas a cheaper gear because they break well no matter what happens and they break apart well it's easily replaceable but of course if everyone thinks that the um the rod that I just showcased are too expensive on their budget then you could probably go a lot cheaper than this one here so this hand line is probably one of the most oldest and still effective style to use as all you're doing is using the um the line to pull in the fish of course make sure to wear gloves as you don't want to get line burned okay so now that we've talked about what gears are available and what to look for let's round up the total and see how much it costs all together to get these gears so the first up we're going to be going for is the um the four flash arrays that's on sale four of these were twenty dollars and the second are these two sabiki rigs they cost three dollars fifty each 
And to match those speakies, I've got one one hour sinker for the speakie rig and a slightly heavier hour sinker for the ledger rig. And finally, we've got this um, Hyper Hyperloop rod and reel combo costing at $120. And um, we'll also throw in the hand line as an extra bonus as well in case you don't want to buy an extra rod but instead a hand line instead. So all that cost $170. I mean, if you minus the rod though, it'll be significantly less. But as you can see, fishing is not impossible. It's doable. And in our budget, it's also do still doable as well. And as many people would know over the past several years on my channel, I've used a lot of budget gears and I always caught a lot of good fish. But of course, nowadays I've upgraded to a more sophisticated type of gears but every now and then I still look for a budget. I hope this show that you don't need like a fancy boat or a fancy fishing gear or fishing rod that's featured all over the show. I mean don't get me wrong it's cool seeing those gears in action but it's also cool to see the budget gear range in action as well especially when you're pulling a big good fish on a cheap setup like this here or even on the hand line too. I mean the hand line Man. Okay, so before you think you're set, there are a few more essentials you'll likely already have or can easily get. A cheap knife for cutting bait and eking fish, a bucket or icebox for your cats, a towel for cleaning your hands and handling fish, and a bag or tackle box for your gear. Scissors and pliers and a measuring tool are also necessary, especially to check if your catch, like a snapper, is legal size. Don't forget the bait. Top Catch has plenty of options. And also check out my tutorial playlist for tips and tricks on choosing the best bait. Now for some quick tips, if you're unsure about gear, make sure to ask the shop staff. They're usually very experienced anglers like the ones at Top Catch Whangaparoa. Also check out the bargain bins as you might find great deals inside them. Look for tackle packs as they usually offer more value than buying individual items. For DIY rig tying, I recommend getting a Jarvis Walker tackle pack and a 30 pound mono trace. It will set you $40 and will be enough to tie your own rigs. To get started, make sure to check out these two videos on how to tie your rigs. So I hope you've learned a thing or two on this video and if you have, I hope that to the people out there who wants to learn fishing, I hope this will give you the encouragement to um, get started on your fishing. But if all else fails, you can always ask the tackle um, shop owners and most of them are experienced and seasoned anglers like the one here in um, Top Catch Whangaparoa. And if you are a local in Whangaparoa, make sure to give um, Top Catch a visit as you are supporting a local tackle store. And uh, it's much more convenient than having to drive all the way out to town just to find a tackle store. Anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed this video and if you have, I hope you um, leave a like in this video and I also hope that, um, well, this will help the beginners out there who are desperate and are keen on trying out fishing. Anyways, thank you all for watching and see you all next time.